Well, good morning. It's Palm Sunday. And I wish you all were here, but we understand why we can't. I hope you will come by during the day and pick up a palm from the cross that's out in front of the church. We have a few prayer concerns I want to bring up to you today. One of those is Tony Gantz's sister, Lynn Seymour, that we were praying for over the past couple of weeks. Lynn passed away from the coronavirus, so I want you to hold Tony and Susan and Lynn's family in your prayers this day. Also, Ed McKibben passed away this week at his home. And I want to be sure that we keep Lynn and all the family in your prayers. We also need to be in prayer this day for all of those who continue to, to fight as hard as they can against this coronavirus. We hope that there will be a, a quick solution but we know that they will stay faithful in the fight until a solution is found and so I want you to be in prayer for all of those health workers all of those who are assisting in that all of those who are doing their best to provide the necessary equipment keep all of them in your prayers and we thank you so let's go to God in prayer. Our gracious God, we gather before you on this very special Sunday, this time in which your people long ago sang their praises as you entered into the holy city. Gracious God, let us too Lift up our praises before you. Sing our songs of Hosanna and are grateful in heart for you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Promised One. Enter not into the city this day, but into our hearts, into our home, we thank you. We're especially grateful for your presence in our lives each and every day. But we want you to be especially felt by those that we lift up before you this day. May they feel your love, your strength, your comfort, as only you can provide it. Continue with us now in this time of worship. This we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus the Christ, who taught us to come to you in prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture this morning, if you would like to follow along with it, is found in the gospel as presented by John, the 12th chapter, the 9th through the 19th verses. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priest planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. The word of God for the people of God. We give thanks to God. As I was preparing the sermon for today, I consulted a lot of important theological sources, as I usually do. One of those sources for today was listening to Jesus Christ Superstar in the background. And as I was listening to it, that part came where Jesus is making his entry into Jerusalem and the way that the crowd shouted, Ho, Santa! Hey, Santa! Santa, Santa, ho! It was probably a pretty good reflection, though, with all the noise and the, and the confusion that was going on. It probably was a pretty good representation of what it was really like on that first Palm Sunday. You see, this was the week of Passover, and hundreds of thousands of pilgrims were making their way into Jerusalem. And so there was a crowd along the road as, as Jesus is coming in. And those who had been present when he raised Lazarus from the dead the day before, we're continuing to tell people about this Jesus and, and about the miracles that he had done. They probably told him about the blind man who received his sight and, and lepers whose skin was made clean. And I'm sure, I'm sure that it excited folks that here is this Jesus who is the king that they'd been looking for, the one who could provide them whatever they needed. And so they begin singing, Ho, Santa! Hey, Santa! Santa! Santa, ho! It was, a, it was quite a time in Jerusalem. So many people there that you could hardly move around. It must have been a lot like that mob that gathers on New Year's Eve in front of Times Square that you could just are shoulder to shoulder with folks and you just... You can't move, you have to just stand there until that ball drops. Well, here they were, all together, waving palm branches, some of them throwing their cloaks down before him, and they were excited. 
They were excited because, because they wanted to see some of his miracles too. If he, would, if he would just do some of his miracles, they would believe in him. So, so they wanted to see him give sight to some blind person, help somebody who's deaf to hear again. Let's, let's see you raise somebody else from the dead. Just give us a miracle, Jesus, and we'll believe in you. We'll believe if we can see a sign. And some folks are like that. They want to see a sign before they can believe in Jesus, before they are willing to follow him and trust in him. That was one group of people who were there that day. There was another group, though, in Jerusalem who also were excited about Jesus coming because they saw in Jesus power. And they were looking for power. They were looking for a powerful leader to make king who would come in and who would rid them finally of the Romans who were ruling over them. They wanted to be rid of the Romans. They understood the Romans were trying very hard to convert them out of their Jewish way of life and their beliefs in God, and they, and they hated the Romans. And so here was this Jesus, and the power that he, he showed, certainly he could rally the forces, he could rally troops, he could, he could bring together those necessary to drive out the Romans. And so they were excited, and they were hollering too, Ho, Santa! Hey, Santa! 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 Ho! Blessed is he who comes! Now, we understand both of these groups. We understand each one of their needs and their desires. Haven't we at some point in time looked for a sign in order to just kind of verify that this Jesus really is the one that we need to give our lives to? Haven't we sometimes wanted to see this, this Jesus and his power and just come and, and take over to rule over his people. But we can understand that. One group wanted him to do magic tricks. One group wanted him to rid them of the, of the Romans. And Jesus did neither. Jesus simply rode into town on a donkey. Jesus wasn't ready to inspire people to raise up their swords and, and take out the enemy, Rome. He wasn't ready to just go around and start doing performances of miracles. And so the Hosanna... Hosannas, Hazannas, the shouts that were so loud as he was coming into town begin to begin to quiet down and begin to get quieter and quieter until they simply cease. You see, they wanted Jesus to be the king. They wanted Jesus to become king, and this wasn't the first time that they had tried to get him to become king. If you remember, the, the first time that the crowd tried to make him king was when he fed the 5,000. And they were all amazed. Here's all this food, all this provided for us. Certainly we need to make him king. 
And Jesus refused. And now he's coming into Jerusalem, finally into the holy city, into the heart of Judaism. He's coming into that place of God, and he's coming in with this crowd that is shouting, certainly, certainly this is the time for him to become king. Son of David, be our king. But he refuses again. He refuses because they don't understand either him or his kingdom. And finally, in their disappointment, I suppose, they turn on Jesus. And during the week, they finally decide that he is not who they're looking for, not who they want, not, he doesn't, he's, and, and they simply take him, they turn him over to the religious leaders, and they turn him over to Pilate. Pilate, who represents Rome there in Jerusalem, asks Jesus forth and right, are you king? Are you the king of the Jews? Are, are you the one? And Jesus' answer to Pilate is, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not like you know kingdoms. I am a king, but not like you know. And it's true. It's true because what, what kind of king that any of them had known, what kind of king would seek out the people to love him, would desire for those to care and to follow him. What king did they know would, would stand like a father whose son has refused him and taken off into a foreign land, would stand at the fence waiting, longing for his son to return? What, what king that they knew would seek out his lost citizens like a shepherd seeks out a lost sheep? What, what king that they knew would die in place of his subjects in order to save them. Certainly no king that they had ever known. Certainly no king that they had ever seen. And so the group that was looking for a miracle worker turns their back on him. The, the group that was, was there looking for a, a, a champion, someone to come into town on a, on a white steed or in a golden chariot and, and run the Romans out, they, they turned their back on him because he didn't give either one of them what they were looking for. And I guess the question that we ask today is the same question that Pilate asked Jesus. What kind of king are you? What kind of king are we looking for? What kind of king do we want? I think, I think I found a clue in, the, in listening to 
Jesus Christ Superstar because as I was kind of listening to it in the background as I was working, and they began singing that Hosanna, Hosanna, Zanna, Zanna, Ho, it, it almost sounded like they were saying, Ho, Santa, Hey, Santa, 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 Ho. You see, I think the crowds were only looking for one who would give them what they wanted. They weren't looking for a loving, caring Savior. They were looking for Santa Claus who would give them what they wanted and what they needed. And so on this, this Palm Sunday, I guess the question really is, who are we looking for? Who do we desire? Who is it that we want to follow? Is it Santa who will give us whatever we want? Or is it the Christ who will give us what we need? Let us pray. Eternal God, Jerusalem was a noisy, confusing place that day. All kinds of needs and wants. All kinds of expectations. And Jesus comes riding into town on a donkey. No white stallion or golden chariot. No magic show. Just coming in. Not only to love his people, but to give his life for all of them. Hosanna, Hosanna, Zanna, Zanna, Ho. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen.